back at it. The sun continues to shine. What else did I learn in my 20s? Well, maybe even my teens. Teens and 20s, that early 20s, I'm going to say, that I continue to use today and that affected the rest of my life and helped me with leadership. Well, I've had lots of different jobs and all those jobs, I've always been asked to um, be a manager or a supervisor or a leader of some kind. And it's always because my dad always told me, he said, hey, there's always something to do. And I always ask if there's something to do. Hey, can I clean the floors? Can I, can I sweep? Can I do this? Whatever. Keep asking. You should never just be doing nothing. And so that was great advice. But what I learned in some of my first jobs, my brother and I, we grew up in a rural environment where they used irrigation water to water the crops, wheat, potatoes, so on and so forth. And back then, before they did it automatically with what they call circles, don't get into do the research, that has it automatically done is people used to change the water. You take these 40 foot long pipes that are four inches in diameter and full of water, empty them out. They were a quarter mile long when you put all 40 together and move them 60 feet every single day or sometimes twice a day. What we, how do we get paid? We got paid per pipe. For every pipe back then, this is 1986, 1987, we would get 10 cents per pipe that we changed every single day for the whole season. And that season would be about four months. And then it'd be winter. We'd go wrestle, not work. And then spring would start again and it'd be another four months and where we'd change water before harvest. What'd we, what'd we do? We, we, were, we would make 10 cents a pipe. And then if we stayed till the end of the season, they'd give us a five cent bonus at the end of the season. So we would get sometimes thousand dollar check or whatever at the end of the season, which was huge back then. 1986 and 1987, if we broke it down in time wise, my brother and I, each one of us, were making 20 bucks an hour because we would do this job so quickly. We, we were in good shape. We were wrestling, we were training, we were you know, um, lifting like we, we still do. And so we would do it so quickly, we would get done in a couple of hours and still have time to go lift, still have time to study, still have time to do some social things and um, relax. But our friends were making $3 and something cents an hour. And we would do in a third of the time or less, we would do make more money than they would. And that's when I learned to be an entrepreneur. In other words, what you put into it is what you get out of it. Making a wage per hour is just not scalable. Even if you're a consultant, and I'm a consultant, right? It's not very scalable. You want to get paid per project or per job. That's what's scalable. That was, along with watching my grandpa, and he used to own construction businesses and stuff, and listening to him and how he bid jobs and stuff. That was, when I was 16 or 17, that was really the first entry into saying, hey, I want to get paid for how much work I do and what I'm worth and how I can do it. The faster I do it, the more money I make per hour. And that's what it's about. It's about a return on investment, right? If we can do something more quickly and better, we should get paid more. And so I continue to do that as an entrepreneur today. Create value and make sure your business is scalable. But that was my first really entry into entrepreneurship in my teens and even into my early 20s doing some farm work like that. And of course, never be outworked.